This man's yard looked perfect the night before. After a long day at work, Harold admired his freshly mowed grass, but everything changed by morning. As he stepped outside, he noticed something alarming. A huge sinkhole had opened up right in his yard. The once perfect lawn had collapsed, and what Harold found inside would leave him speechless. But before we dive into the story, make sure to smash that like button, hit subscribe, and ring the notification bell so you never miss out on our exciting stories. It was a quiet Sunday morning when it all began. Harold was supposed to take his son to soccer practice. His 14-year-old was already in full uniform ready to go. But as Harold grabbed the car keys, a loud noise echoed from the front yard. Confused, Harold and his son rushed outside following the sound. Harold stepped cautiously toward the noise, each step making it grow louder. Then he saw it. The ground beneath him was cracking. Grass and soil were sinking rapidly. Harold jumped back just in time to avoid falling into a massive sinkhole that had formed within minutes. His son, excited and curious, ran around the hole, but Harold quickly pulled him back, warning him to stay away. As Harold stood in shock, more people started to gather, including his wife and neighbors. Despite his wife's protests, Harold decided to investigate. Ignoring their pleas, he lowered himself into the dark sinkhole. Minutes passed with no word from him, making everyone on the surface uneasy. Suddenly, Harold's voice echoed from below, revealing that the sinkhole was far larger than anyone had imagined. It stretched deep and wide beneath the ground. When Harold finally re-emerged, his face was pale and he warned everyone to stay away from the sinkhole. Something dangerous was down there and Harold knew they needed expert help immediately. He contacted emergency services, but to his frustration, no one seemed to take the situation seriously. They told him it was Sunday and they would send someone the next day. Harold was furious. This couldn't wait. Serious damage was already happening. As Harold pleaded for help on the phone, disaster struck. A loud rumble echoed from the sinkhole and a deep crack formed, spreading across the street. It didn't stop there. It continued into Harold's neighbor's yard and under a newly built garage. The structure crumbled as the crack ripped through its foundation. Panic spread throughout the neighborhood as people ran around in fear, unsure of what to do. Realizing that no one was coming to help, Harold took charge. Standing on a tree trunk, he called out to his neighbors. We're on our own. We have to work together to fix this, he declared. His words rallied the crowd, and two men, Marcus and Lawrence, volunteered to help. Together, the three men returned to the sinkhole to figure out where the destruction was coming from. As they climbed down into the hole, a strong, familiar smell hit Harold, something he had encountered before in his construction days. He asked Marcus to search through the debris, and soon they found the source of the odor. Fragments of nitroglycerin, a dangerous explosive substance. Harold knew instantly that this wasn't just a natural sinkhole. Something more sinister was at play. The three men quickly resurfaced and Harold held up a red piece of paper, a remnant of a dynamite stick. The crowd gasped in shock as he explained that someone had been using explosives underground. This wasn't just an accident, it was intentional. But why? And who was behind it? The answers lay below the surface. Determined to uncover the truth, Harold, Marcus, and Lawrence followed the cracks that had spread through the neighborhood. Their investigation led them all the way to the edge of town, where the buildings gave way to a dense forest. Hidden among the trees, they found an entrance to an old, abandoned gold mine. Harold knew instantly that this was where the trouble had started, but what they were about to discover inside the mine would shock them even more. Harold, Marcus, and Lawrence cautiously entered the old mine, not knowing what they would find. As they ventured deeper, they noticed signs of recent activity, wires, lights, and footprints in the dust. Someone had been using this mine, and recently. The deeper they went, the stronger the smell of nitroglycerin became. Harold's stomach sank. This wasn't just an abandoned mine. It had been repurposed, and whatever was going on in here was likely responsible 
for the sinkholes and destruction in their town. After following the wires for a while, they stumbled upon a shocking scene. A group of men, about ten in total, were working deep in the cave. They were placing dynamite along the rock walls and clearly knew what they were doing. It was a full-blown illegal mining operation, and they were after the gold that had once been abundant in this area. Harold and his companions hid behind a boulder and watched in disbelief as one of the men lit a fuse. The ground shook violently as a massive explosion rocked the cave. Harold, Marcus, and Lawrence were thrown backward by the force of the blast, disoriented and struggling to regain their footing. As the dust settled, they saw the group of men celebrating, holding up pieces of shimmering gold debris. There was still gold in the mine, but the cost of their illegal mining was devastating the town above. Harold knew they had to act fast. He pulled out his phone and began secretly taking pictures and videos of the illegal operation. He gathered as much evidence as he could, capturing the men in the act. Once he had enough proof, the three men quietly made their way out of the mine, careful not to be seen. They knew they couldn't confront the criminals on their own, but with the evidence in hand, they had a strong case to bring to the authorities. Back on the surface, Harold, Marcus, and Lawrence rushed to the police station. They presented their findings to the authorities, showing the photos and videos that clearly documented the illegal mining operation. Harold explained how the explosions had caused the sinkholes and cracks throughout the town. This time, the police listened. The police took Harold's evidence seriously and quickly organized a team to investigate. Harold, Marcus, and Lawrence led the authorities back to the mine, retracing their steps. Armed with flashlights and equipped for an arrest, the officers moved silently into the cave, careful not to alert the miners. As they neared the makeshift camp, the voices of the illegal miners echoed through the cave. The leading officer signaled the group to spread out and surround the criminals. In a coordinated strike, the officers overwhelmed the miners, catching them completely off guard. The entire operation was shut down in minutes, and the miners were handcuffed and led out of the cave. It was a swift and efficient arrest. Back at the police station, the miners were questioned, and the full extent of the operation came to light. This wasn't just a small-time crime. The illegal mining network stretched across the country, with dozens of sites causing destruction in towns everywhere. Sinkholes, collapsing buildings, and cracks in the ground were all the result of these reckless explosions. Harold's quick thinking and bravery had exposed a dangerous scheme, and the authorities knew it. The police, realizing their earlier negligence in dismissing Harold's calls for help, issued a public apology to him and his neighbors. They acknowledged that if not for Harold's persistence, the situation could have escalated into an even greater disaster. But the surprises didn't end there. When a secondary team of experts was sent into the mine after the arrest, they discovered something even more shocking. A substantial amount of gold still remained underground. The value of the gold was enormous, worth millions of dollars. Rather than letting it fall into the wrong hands, the local government decided to put it to good use for the community. The local government made a surprising announcement. The gold recovered from the mine would be used to fund a massive project to stabilize the town and repair the damage caused by the illegal mining. And they had the perfect person to lead this ambitious effort, Harold. With his extensive experience in construction, he was appointed as the project manager to oversee the restoration. Harold threw himself into the work, leading teams of engineers and construction workers to reinforce the ground beneath the town. They used advanced techniques to fill the sinkholes and stabilize the earth, ensuring the foundations of homes and streets were secure once again. The project was a massive undertaking, but Harold's leadership and expertise ensured that everything was done safely and efficiently. At the same time, Harold coordinated with local contractors to repair the homes that had been damaged by the cracks and sinkholes. He made sure that every repair met the highest safety standards, sparing no effort to ensure the town's stability. 
His dedication was evident to everyone in the community as he worked tirelessly to rebuild their homes and their peace of mind. Months passed and slowly but surely, the town transformed. The once dangerous sinkholes were now solid ground and the homes that had been on the verge of collapse were now standing firm. The entire community watched in awe as their town was brought back to life and they knew it was all thanks to Harold's leadership and determination. When the project was finally completed, the town organized a grand celebration to honor Harold and the volunteers who had helped save their community. Streets were filled with music, laughter, and a sense of relief. Harold was the guest of honor, and as evening approached, the community gathered around a small stage to hear his speech. Harold stepped up, overwhelmed with emotion, as he looked out at the smiling faces of his neighbors. He began his speech with heartfelt gratitude, saying, Today we stand together not just as neighbors, but as a united community. Our town faced a crisis, but we didn't let fear overcome us. Instead, we came together and achieved something extraordinary. Harold continued his speech, his voice steady but filled with emotion. I am honored to have been a part of this journey, but this achievement isn't mine alone. It belongs to all of you. Your trust, support, and teamwork were the foundations upon which we rebuilt our town. The crowd cheered in response, their applause echoing through the streets. He then concluded his speech with a powerful statement that resonated with everyone present. I am proud to call this town my home and each of you my family. Together, we've proven that no challenge is too great when we stand united. The sense of pride and unity in the crowd was palpable. The people knew that Harold had not only saved their town from physical destruction, but he had also strengthened the bonds within the community. As Harold stepped down from the stage, his neighbors surrounded him, offering words of thanks and praise. They knew that without his bravery and leadership, the town's future could have been very different. Over the following months, the town flourished. Thanks to the gold's bounty, new community projects were funded and the town's infrastructure was stronger than ever. Streets that had once been split by cracks were now smooth and safe. Homes that had teetered on the edge of collapse were now secure and the once dangerous mine had been permanently closed off, ensuring the safety of future generations. Harold, though a humble man, had become a local hero. His determination, quick thinking, and leadership had not only saved lives, but also ensured that the town's future was bright. As he walked through the newly restored streets, he felt a deep sense of contentment knowing that his actions had made a lasting difference.